you, everyone. Bye, Zoe. Hi, everyone. Uh, uh, my name is Ralph Borland, and I'm here at Amaze today, uh, streaming to you from Cape Town, South Africa, in my studio in an area called Woodstock. Uh, and I'm here representing my projects, African Robots and Spacecraft. Um, and uh, my presentation today is about our adventures in wire art around a project called Spacecraft Arcade. So I'm going to explain to you in this presentation some of the work that I do with wire artists in South Africa um, and how this led up to a project called Spacecraft Arcade, which is a, a video game project, an arcade game project in development. Uh, and that's one of the links through to, to a maze. So to everyone listening, uh, much love, greetings uh, from South Africa on a cold but sunny winter's day, and I hope you're all well. So, um, I'm, I'm an artist. I studied fine art uh, at the University of Cape Town back in the 1990s, and I majored in sculpture. And I got interested then in the use of electronics um, and combining hand sculpting with some digital processes. Uh, and I, I went and did my master's at a program at New York University called the Interactive Telecommunications Program. Uh, back in 1999 and that's a program that's still going and contributing uh, a lot of people to the world of digital art and interactive art. I'm sure there are some IT peers involved with the maze or out there listening and uh, there I really uh, got to grips with uh, how to use microcontrollers and cheap electronic components in order to do interesting things with interaction um, and when I came back to South Africa in about 2003 I started teaching what I'd learned at my old art school. Um, I then took a, a break of five years and went and did my PhD in uh, Trinity College in Dublin in an engineering department where I joined a group called the Disruptive Design Team. And uh, I looked at uh, design for the developing world as one of my topics. So uh, then I came back to South Africa about 10 years ago and I started doing a project which combined you know, some of these interests and experiences in art development and interactive electronics. And uh, the angle that I chose was to work with uh, wire artists. So wire artists are a, a Southern African, in fact, further, further north as well, but let's start with saying Southern Africa, a Southern African phenomenon in which children make their own toys out of wire. Uh, so wire being an available cheap resource um, children make their own wire cars usually. That's, that's the majority of the custom or the modern tradition. And uh, the Victoria and Albert Museum in London, uh, who has a museum of childhood, they have a display about wire cars from Africa and they date it to the 1950s, mid 20th century, is when uh, children started making their own toys based on buses and trucks that were coming through their areas, often in rural Africa. Um, and I grew up in South Africa and Zimbabwe and I saw this wire car production happening around me. And in fact, I even made my own wire car when I was, I think about 13 years old. And I'll show it to you as an example. So this is a little wire car. Um, you may recognize it. I'll see if I can give you a background. Let me uh, grab a, a DIY background for you. So this is a little wire car. Um, it is a, what is it? So I can't hear you out there, but I'm going to give you a second to try and uh, guess what this is. Sorry, I'm trying to get my left and right working. So if any of you guessed a Citroen 2CV, the De Chevaux, then you win a prize. You, uh, you're correct. That's exactly what it is. So I was fascinated by these little, uh, by, by Citroen 2 CVs and by the practice of wire art. So I made myself this, uh, this little car out of wire. Now, some children uh, who start out making wire cars as a, as, a, as a hobby and to make, you know, make themselves toys when they didn't have the resources or their parents didn't have the money to buy them toys, they go on as adults to become uh, wire artists who make a living from making and selling wire art 
in the streets of southern African cities. So in Cape Town, where I live, when you drive around the city and you come to the traffic lights, there'll be men, it's almost exclusively men, um, who offer to sell you objects that they've made out of wire that are decorative objects and you know toys and some functional objects like vases and picture frames, all made out of wire. And all you need to make wire art is some galvanized steel wire from a hardware store, which is cheap, and some pliers. And of course, a great deal of uh, experience and expertise that some of these men have been practicing this art their whole lives. So as an artist myself, I one day in 2013 or so got on my bicycle, cycled to the traffic lights, introduced myself to some of the men there and asked if we could work together on a project to, uh, to, to create some interesting wire art. And I wanted to bring some interactive electronics to it. As an idea of the skill that you can see out there, I'm going to show you now another wire car before I get on to the other things that we make. So this is quite large for the, for the screen, but this is a, an Audi. It's got the Audi symbol on it. Uh, good for you there in Berlin. And uh, let's take a look at, at this car. So this is a very lovingly rendered uh, sports car made out of wire. And as you can see, it's also got a sound system in it. So it has a Bluetooth radio taken out of a cheap Chinese uh, mass produced little multimedia speaker unit. And then the wire artist has hacked it, taken apart and put it into this car. So this is a very well-produced wireframe Audi. And something that really caught my attention with this practice is the way that this handmade wire art reminds one of old school computer wireframe 3D. And that's you know something that I grew up with. I'm 47 now, I was born in 1974. And when I was uh, as young as probably seven years old, I was going down to the corner, corner shop where I grew up in Mowbray in Cape Town. We call it the cafe, the corner cafe, which is your sort of general convenience store. Uh, and there they had uh, arcade games. And I played some of the really early iconic arcade games like Asteroids, which is you know, one of the first ever arcade games. They had the original cathode ray tube Asteroids game when I was a kid. And I used to go down to the corner shop and play computer games and buy comics. Um, and this was a, a route into a, a global Western culture, you know, so through, through arcade games and comics and these mass produced kind of, in a way, subcultural, but also pop, you know, main, mainstream, but with some, with some subversive messages and some like really interesting uh, new and progressive technologies. Um, I was exposed to some of these international trends and images and aesthetics. And as a, as a young child in South Africa, along with many other children around the world, especially in the peripheries, uh, what we call uh, the South, you know, in, in South Africa, the rest of Africa, Brazil, um, and uh, Asia, Southeast Asia, all of those kind of places, children could very well have been exposed to uh, pop culture from the US and Europe through mediums like arcade games. So here I am, uh, this, uh, that was my childhood. Um, I have a nostalgic relationship to old school computers as well as to the most recent cutting edge technology and virtual reality and digital processes. And uh, from my position, I thought it was really interesting to see how these handmade wire cars resembled wireframe graphics. And so I thought it'd be interesting to play on that uh, my first, my first uh, attempt at, at, at collaborating um, was to produce a little bird. And if you're interested in seeing videos of these uh, objects in motion, in action, you can visit africanrobots.net. So africanrobots.net. Um, and there you can see videos of objects like this little starling. It's a bird. So the starling is a local bird that you find in the streets of Cape Town. And um, we first made a starling that uh, was ran on a Nokia phone battery, made sounds um, and flapped its wings. 
and this is from 2013. It's no longer functional as you know most of the DIY electronic things that we make tend to run out of juice or I don't maintain them. So they exist as doc video documentation and you can see some of that on our on our website. We've done you know more developed birds. So the starling is a a bit of a, a muse of mine. I love the starlings because they're like crows or magpies. They're very nimble, curious, almost robot-like birds. So you can see the starling here and you can see underneath that it actually was running on a Nokia phone, you know, Nokia phone battery in a Nokia phone case, which I then replaced with ordinary, ordinary batteries. And I wonder, this one might actually have some functionality to it. Oh yeah. So there you go. That's like a little animated bird. So yeah, we've made lots of things. Here's a Here's an ant, you know, made like an ant with a custom circuit board. Um, we did a version of this in Brazil where we used uh, toys that we hacked and we made uh, ants that did like some crazy, crazy things. We made quite a few of these that interact. Um, but that was, that's African Robots and that's an ongoing project. But uh, in about 2015, we split off a sister project called Spacecraft. And Spacecraft really pays particular attention to that old school wireframe aesthetic. Um, and I'll, I'll show you some of the source material. So as well as um, cars, we also have things that you can buy. This is like, this is a helicopter, which is quite a iconic form. So uh, design and with this helicopter, you can uh, move a little, um, you can move a little lever and it rotates the, rotates the propeller of the helicopter. So this is an existing design, like a vernacular design, you could say. I've seen these helicopters being produced for the last 20, 20 or 25 years and their, their design varies, but they're, they're, all, they're all pretty similar. You know, so like jokes or stories or designs for things, you know, they get people repeat them. This is a, an airplane. You know, so this is an airplane from Mozambique and it has a little battery on the bottom and little uh, propellers. And when you connect it up, I don't know if you can see on the zoom there that the propellers are actually rotating on the airplane. So. Uh, so as well as cars, you have helicopters, airplanes, and I thought, well, what about what about spaceships? And the reason the reason why I thought about spaceships was because of this wireframe crossover, the analog digital crossover. Um, the Star Wars movies were having their more recent wave of popularity in 2015. Some of the sequels were coming out, or prequels, depending how you categorize them. And I thought, um, why don't we? make some Star Wars spaceships in this wireframe style. I'll, I'll download 3D models and we will uh, make some handmade uh, wireframes with them. What I was also doing there was I was reacting to something that happens already in wire art culture is that some wire art objects that are sold in the street are derived from movie characters. And uh, one of the reasons why artists do this is that they're riding on the popularity of an existing product. So. For example, the Finding Nemo movies had that little iconic clownfish. And so you know, one day many years ago, I happened to see um, this little clownfish for sale at the traffic lights. And it was when the, it's when the Finding Nemo movies were out on circuit. And I thought, how ingenious, you know, because, because I saw first one for sale at one traffic light and then I saw, uh, saw them for sale at you know, another set of traffic lights. And then soon it seemed like the whole city was covered with these little uh, clownfish that wire artists were selling to the public. And it was obviously because it was popular. People liked the fact that you could see this character from a movie um, and buy it in this other medium. 
And so I thought that's a really interesting concept. Uh, part of what I intend to do with my project is to increase the markets for wire art uh, to help with employment in a part of the world where there's very little formal employment and where you have these uh, very ingenious artisans who are self-employed and who make a living from their skills and their wits and their business acumen. And I, and I, I wanted as an artist to interact with these, these other artists, these informal street artists and see could I bring some of my training and my access uh, to this sector and increase the markets for their goods and also elevate the status of wire art. So I think wire art deserves to be in art galleries and museums and you know taken more seriously in a way uh, for what it is. And the other thing I was responding to with the Star Wars project was the idea of the bootleg or the knockoff. So this is a little card from a you could say like a pirate Lego, uh, pirate Star Wars Lego product. So made in China, um, Star Wars like, but not Star Wars, Space Wars. So that's how we came up with um, the idea of spacecraft. And I'll show you a little brief presentation in just a few minutes that will show you our logo, which also plays with this idea. But by now you probably want to see the uh, spaceships themselves. So. This is a, an X-Wing, of course, as I'm sure you can tell. I'm going to give you a little background, uh, see if that'll increase your the visibility. <laughs> a very little background. Um, you'll see some photographs of these as well. And if you go to the website uh, spacecraft.africa, then you will see um, these in some very beautiful photographs. Uh, we did some very high resolution photographs. I'm trying to do this kind of reverse mirror maneuvering of these so that you can see what's happening. So this is an X-Wing. You, you're also welcome when you play with these to make space sounds. Here comes the, here comes the X-Wing. And uh, what would an X-Wing be without a TIE fighter? So. Here we have the, the X-Wing and the TIE Fighter. And these are two very finely made wire art um, renditions based on 3D models that are free 3D models that we downloaded because there's a big community around uh, Star Wars and spacecraft. Um, and they exist as sort of these analog digital things. And here is... Um, the Millennium, Millennium Falcon. So, <laughs> trying to fit this all in the screen for you. This is the Millennium Falcon, and that's one of our larger, our larger spaceships. Okay, so let's get to the spacecraft arcade. Um, I'm going to show you. I'm going to share my screen. And I'm going to show you a little document. So spacecraft, here you can see our logo. So that's actually, uh, I, I made this lettering, uh, 3D lettering by hand in wire and then uh, photographed it and vectorized it, turned it into our, our logo. So it's playing with the idea of a pirate, a pirate style, which I really like in terms of, you know, living in the South and having experience of North and South uh, is this way that the South consumes media from the North, um, but it doesn't do it passively. You know, we, we copy them, we make our own versions, uh, we feed these back into global culture. And the photograph in the background here is taken like a, just a few months ago here in Cape Town of a row of battered arcade game cabinets in a local cafe. We call them cafes, the corner shop. Um, and this is where kids still go and play arcade games. So the concept is to, I'm not going to show you all this text on this, on this image. So um, let's see, I'm getting some messages from participants there. I'm going to check those in a, in a sec, but uh, to video. here we can see some beautiful photographs of the of the wire art, yeah. so just, uh, just, uh, just for your interest, 
these photographs are taken okay. through a practice I, I just told him that there were more, but I didn't know if you did it differently. So... Camera, and then it takes multiple photographs uh, at different depths of field through an object, and then it assembles them into an all-in-focus image. And the reason why we did such a you know co complex way of photographing them is it's actually very difficult to photograph wire art because um, in terms of getting your lighting and your depth of field right, you tend to have parts of it in focus, parts of it out. Um, and also backgrounds are quite difficult. So photographing wire art is, is difficult. And these are some beautiful images that I was helped to take by a photographer friend in his studio. And they're such high resolution that you could print them billboard size. And I would really love to see them printed at that size because you would then really see the beautiful um, level of detail in these in these images. So I don't know if you can see on screen now some of the quality of this wire art. Okay, whoops, okay, too far. I'm gonna bring you back in. So this is an image of the original Star Wars cabinet. Um, I'm not sure if you might be, you might be blocked by my video, but here you go, you should be able to see the Star Wars uh, cabinet of the original game. So this is the Battle for the Death Star, the one of the original Star Wars arcade games back from the mid-1980s. And I literally played this game in my corner shop when I was a kid, you know, probably 10 years old or so. And something that was really amazing at the time, really felt very futuristic, was this uh, vector graphics that they had. So it was cathode ray tube, um, you know, technology that was rendering the image and it was being traced uh, like asteroids. You could quite clearly see how the, the cathode ray tube was tracing the graphics. Um, on this, it was these multicolored line 3D, and you could very much get the sense of 3D through this minimal medium. And you were flying down trenches in the Death Star in an X-Wing with your targeting system, and you, had, and you were shooting down TIE fighters and shooting gun towers within the Death Star. And here, so this is the original the original game. So what I did as a project in 2019 is I made a um, our, so this is a this is a photograph of a real arcade cabinet that I downloaded the plans for the original Star Wars uh, cabinet. We CNC'd our own copy, made you know vinyl graphics, and um, produced this arcade game cabinet. And what we did with this is uh, we used it as a way of displaying the spaceships with lighting inside it. So you can see here a photograph of you look in through the arcade screen and then you can see the, the sculptures on display. So it's a method of displaying the sculptures. And this is a close up of the logo, the sort of ex expanded logo, what I call a tableau, you know, sort of tableau design. And this is myself. And um, with me is Louis Kaluzi, who is one of my main collaborators on African robots and spacecraft. And he's a very talented um, and skilled wire artist. Um, and he is from Zimbabwe, which is also where I'm from as well. And then part of what has enabled us to now move on to the next stage of this project, which we embarked on, is we did a really like large scale installation using our processes from, um, from spacecraft, where what you can see in the background is a wall sculpture of uh, the Death Star, Death Star scenes, where you have three panels. On the left, you have the trenches of the Death Star, where my cursor is. So this is some meticulously made uh, 3D forms in wireframe showing the trenches of the Death Star. In the middle, you have a bit of an animated scene uh, where these lights turn on and off, and you see the Death Star being targeted through your heads-up display as if you're an X-Wing. Um, and you see all the other spaceships rendered around it. And then you also have then um, on the right the vent in the Death Star, which is where they placed the bomb in two movies. Yeah, unbelievably, the Death Star design didn't change to reduce that vulnerability. And this is myself, Lewis, Paddy, and Mark, who are two of my uh, design and fabrication um, collaborators. They have a company called Thinking. So together we worked on this project and installed it in the offices to a corporation in Cape Town. Um, we used virtual reality and 3D modeling. So on the top left here, you can see a scene from inside VR. Um, we then output polystyrene uh, CNC templates. You can see lower left 
in which people made copies. Uh, they sent wire artists, up to 10 wire artists, made wire art based on these copies. Here's me in VR positioning elements of the sculpture in a VR environment in order to design it. Here's Lewis placing wire spaceships uh, within this installation and then working on the Death Star vent. So through that, we've created assets which uh, we now want to use to take the project to the next level. And this is, you know, which, where I will, you know, end in this remaining few minutes of this presentation is to say, what we now want to do is we want to create an actual playable arcade game. So instead of our custom cabinet displaying the sculptures, we want it to be a screen uh, where you would have the screen. Uh, and we want to use the work that we've done in creating wireframe uh, spaceships. We've already photogrammetry scanned some of our wireframe spaceships and brought them back into 3D. We want to clean up those models, create a game environment, and then allow someone to play a simple game of Star Wars, similar to the original game, but now the vector graphics will all be wire art. So basically you'll see binding and wire structures and you'll be piloting wire spaceships through a wire environment. And we'll also have a sound system uh, within the, the arcade game. So it's an important part of, our, of uh, some video games is sound. And for us particularly, we play on dub and reggae culture. We're all into that, myself and the wire artists. And it's one of our reference points and motifs for our work is dub with its heavy bass sound. And in, in, and in, um, and in Zimbabwe, uh, there's a word in Shona called chindanga. And chindanga is the name for a, a big boom box or a sound system. And so we want this to be our spacecraft, spacecraft arcade chindanga, um, meaning that when you play it, you'll get an awesome sound sensation coming from it. And also, even if someone's not playing it, it will run on demo mode, and you should be able to select tracks as if on a jukebox. I mean, I used to, when I didn't have any money as a, as a kid, I used to go down to the arcade and pretend I was playing the arcade games. And also you would, um, you know, when you enter your name, if you get a high score, you do this like scrolling through this list. So that's what we want to create is a real playable arcade game in which the elements have been replaced with wire art. And we will have completed this, this complete loop that goes from being inspired by a international arcade game, making our own copies through a local media, scanning those and bringing them back into a digital environment and then making a playable game of that. And we will have performed this Southern translation of a Western uh, product. So that's our intention. And if anybody wants to speak to me about, um, about this project and wants to be involved, or you know, would like to support it, because that's part of what we're looking for too, is support to, to execute this work, you can contact me at ralph.borland.gmail.com. You can find my Instagram, which is Ralph Borland, B-O-R-L-A-N-D. AfricanRobots.net has a contact page. Spacecraft.Africa has a contact page. We're basically got YouTube channels, Instagram, Facebook. We're all, all over that. So please feel free to reach out. And I hope that you've um, enjoyed this, this uh, presentation. And thank you to Thorsten for inviting me and to Zareda and to Sebastian and to everyone else who is uh, helping to, to make this happen. Uh, thanks, uh, thanks, Spike, as well, for your support here. Um, and I think that's, uh, so that's probably it from me.